this is the asterisk architecture. So if you look on the asterisk architecture, the most important part is this one, the switching core, right? And if you look here, this is the place where everything happens is the switch itself. We have other parts like the codec translator capable to trans transcode between, between uh, different audio streams. The application launcher controlling the applications. The I.O. schedule and manager, also important to schedule everything on OpenSIPs and the dynamic module loader where you load your modules. And then we have subsystems like the file format API where you can stream from files to the to the to the core. Uh, the channels API where you can stream from channels such as ChenDaddy or ChenPJSIP. The codec translation API is capable to translate different streams. And finally, the applications API where you run your applications like Dio, like backgrounds to create an IVR, where you connect these channels and you run applications over these channels. Channels. There were lots of channels in the beginning of Asterisk, like the Chan H3, H323. In the beginning, in 2004, 2005, uh, many different voice protocols were, were fighting for, uh, for survival. So you have MGCP, Media Gateway Control Protocol, you had uh, H323, Unisteam, Cisco SCCP. But finally, after almost 20 years, uh, session initiation protocol became dominant. 99% uh, of the phones support uh, SIP, the session initiation protocol. The, the session initiation protocol won the protocol battle. So right now, we have this Chen PJ SIP. Uh, in the beginning, we had the Chen SIP. On this version, Asterisk 22, you don't have even the Chen SIP, not even the deprecated version. It was removed from the from the software. So we are using Chan PJ SIP. It's much better. Uh, the performance is better. There are more resources. It's a little tricky to to use. It's still I was very familiar with Chan SIP, so for me it's sometimes it's a bit annoying, but it, it works quite well. There's a still the IX IX. The IX2 has some had in the past some let's say some use on reducing the bandwidth, use it. But right now with the bandwidth we have on the internet and the connections between servers, it doesn't make sense. And Chen Daddy, uh, it's the channel we use for cards, for ISDN cards and analog cards. Also I see a, a steep decrease on analog and ISDN cards, but there are certain certain places in the world where they are still very popular. And uh, certainly there are still many implementations, many systems working on this type of card. Codex. Codex are really important. Uh, they are the basis of voice, of voice over IP. Some of the most famous uh, codecs is the G729. It's capable to compress the audio in eight times. It was very, very important in the beginning of voice over IP when the data links uh, were merely uh, were mere 64 kilobits per second. Uh, to compress the voice from 64 kilobits per second to 8 kilobits per second was a really a big deal. And many companies still use G729 even to these days. However, lately I have seen more focus on high quality uh, high quality codecs. If you think in the future, if you think on AI, on artificial intelligence, uh, the quality of the voice is now much more important than bandwidth. Because bandwidth in these days, it's very easy to get a one gigabit uh, circuit. So for 64 kilobits per second, it's, not, it's nothing in modern networks. So uh, what's the idea here? The best thing you can do right now is to go for high definition codecs like G722 and Opus. Opus is 
probably the best codec available to users in these days was developed by Google. And you can encode from 5.3 to 512 kilobits per second from narrow band to wide band. And it's available on WebRTC, on web. It's probably one of the best codecs. Also, G711, ULaw and ALaw are also very popular in many places. And ALaw is, is particularly, particularly popular in, in Brazil. The other codecs, G723, G726, GSM, ILBC, they are, in my opinion, obsolete. And you should, should even uh, try it, right? Because G723 is really bad and it it has a lot of compression right but opus can get you can get the same compression with a better quality so there's no reason even g729 that it's excellent it required licenses i said i think the the patent expired a few years ago and but i wouldn't use anyway I, I, we don't need to to compress uh, voice in these days asterisk is capable to to encode and decode all of these codecs and it translates it in real time. And one of the things that I like in Asterisk, it, it does it, uh, let's say, transparently. You don't need to configure uh, it. There is an internal format called the S linear, that it's a PCM format. So any co all codecs are converted to the S linear and then converted back to another codec. So that's how Asterisk works. That's the architecture. File formats is the same. You can save in many different formats. I think the OG, uh, ODG uh, formats in these days, like Vorbis, uh, they are becoming popular because they are in use with WebRTC. Uh, you can send uh, many of these codecs to AI. So they are very interesting. Obviously, the wave is very popular. MP3 is very popular. And today it's important to have a codec that is compatible to, to AI. And you are not seeing here MP3, but Asterisk also supports MP3. If you load the correct library when compiling, it will load the MP3 format. And let's say, what are the most popular? Wave. GSMs in, in some cases, OG, ODG. The other ones, G729, GSM, yeah, not anymore, in my opinion. Applications on Asterisk 22. Uh, if you do a core show applications, you're going to see 181, 181 applications registered. So these are the applications you have on, on Asterisk. Uh, they're, there are modules. Sometimes you load a module and you get new applications, or you unload a module and you get rid of some applications. Asterisk is very, very, very rich in terms of the applications supported, and there are many, many applications you can uh, you can use. So it's very flexible, very powerful, and many things are implemented as applications. Let me give you some examples, like Dial. When you receive a call and do a dial, you dial to another number. Another application playback, it play, plays back an audio. Background, background generates an, an audio and waits for a DTMF input. So it, it's useful for IVRs. Record to record uh, a sound to a file. Mix monitor to record a call. There are many, many, many applications that you can use with asterisk.